The information for this video came from numerous sources, including newspapers, magazines, and especially these two excellent books. Stanley Ketchell, A Life of Triumph and Prophecy, that's by Manuel Mora, and Sam Langford, Boxing's Greatest Uncrowned Champion, that's by Clay Moyle. And these here are the subjects of today's discussion. Two natural middleweights of the early 20th century, Sam Langford, also known as the greatest uncrowned heavyweight champion, rated among the top 10 heavyweights of all time. And here's Stanley Ketchell, ranked by Ring Magazine, number eight, best middleweight ever. Boxing historian Burt Sugar rates Ketchell 19th best fighter ever, pound for pound. Both Langford and Ketchell fought opponents of whatever size, including much taller and heavier Jack Johnson. Some boxing aficionados ponder what would happen had middleweight champion Ketchell, also known as Stanley Kiesel, fought Sam Langford. In fact, a bout had been planned to take place in San Francisco, probably in middle or late 1911, but that battle was canceled for reasons I'll talk about later. But prior to that planned fight that never happened, Ketchell and Langford did meet in the ring. That was on April 27, I think, 1910. The place, the National Athletic Club in Philadelphia. This episode is often overlooked for whatever reason, even by those knowledgeable of boxing history. Ketchell and Langford fought for six rounds, it was in front of about 4,500 fans. Those fans, by the way, paid between $2 and $10 a ticket. That would be roughly $54 to $270 in today's money. The bout was understood to be a publicity thing, to give an idea of what would happen in a future San Francisco fight. And that has led many to ask, did either man exhibit all that he had in Philadelphia? Or did each hold back in order to avoid an outcome that may be too one-sided or a disaster ending in a KO? Either outcome would mean no big fight later. That would mean no big money later. It is a fact that a well-publicized second encounter, probably in San Francisco, could pay both Langford and Ketchell enough money to retire. You decide whether or not Ketchell and Langford gave all that they had in this Philadelphia encounter. Ketchell, by the way, enhanced the odds that a second fight would occur by weighing in for this Philadelphia encounter at an emaciated 159 pounds. That's, what, 72 kilos? And that put him at a 19-pound or 5-kilo disadvantage to Sam's 178 pounds or 81 kilos. In other words, should Ketchell fail big in Philadelphia, that loss could be attributed to a weight disadvantage. The second counter in San Francisco was to guarantee that both men would weigh in as middleweights. Ketchell also let it be known that his damaged right hand, that was from a recent encounter with, I think it was Frank Klaus, had to be numbed with Novocaine, and that again put him at a disadvantage. Sam Melanford had another advantage. He was almost as tall as Ketchell at 5 feet 6 and a half or 5 feet 7. That's about oh, 169, 170 centimeters. And Langford had a longer reach at 74 inches, or 188 centimeters. Ketchell, at 5 feet 7, 170 centimeters, had a reach of 70 inches, or 178 centimeters. Now, both men had faced heavyweight champion Jack Johnson. Keep in mind, both Langford and Ketchell are natural middleweights. Sam lost a 
15 round decision. That was years before, I think it was 1906. Ketchell had been knocked out in the 12th round, and that was just months before he met Sam Langford. So Ketchell does not have much time to recover. Well, let's take a look at the uh, fight. It went six rounds. There's no decision. Uh, they're not allowed under Pennsylvania law. And here's how it went down. The fighters in round one are very cautious, stalking, pecking, no real fight. Langford, very hesitant. Ketchell did introduce his famous shift, probably copied from former heavyweight champion Bob Fitzsimmons. In other words, feign with the right hand, then shift weight onto his right foot so as to strike with his left. And it worked, but Sam moved away. Ketchell also landed with a hard right, and it, that split Langford's lip. The newspaper accounts, most from Philadelphia, called this round, well, dubious. One writer said it had a slight odor of a rat to it. What he's implying is neither Ketchell nor Langford is bringing his all to the fight. Round two, the same lack of action. By the very end, the fans were very upset. They're hissing, booing, they're throwing cigar butts into the ring. Ketchell, when he gets to his corner, talks to his manager who's rubbing his neck. What are they yelling at me for? The manager says, just concentrate on our money, please, kid. Just try to hold back, please. Most accounts had that second round even, some leaning to Langford for landing uh, two heavy punches. Round three. Now, keep in mind, there are only six. Ketchell runs at Langford, strikes him with a hard right, right to the head, then to the body. Langford lands a right to the chin. Ketchell a left-right-left left combination to Langford's jaw, then a straight right to Langford's cheekbone. Ketchell, before the bell, succeeded with the Ketchell shift, and that one hurt Langford, though he landed a right to Ketchell's face, and Stanley's now bleeding rather profusely from the nose and the mouth. Round four, Langford pushes Ketchell against the ropes, then catches him with two lefts to the midsection. Then both are clinching. Langford is able to pull out. He rips into Ketchell's body, then a jab to the face, then a hook to the head. Ketchell is now bleeding profusely, but he's still swarming. He throws a right to the jaw. It lands, however, on Langford's ear. Now that cut the skin and the blood is flowing there. At the end of the round, Lankford's weight advantage is showing. Between the rounds, Ketchell is standing up. Round five. Ketchell burst out of the corner. Now, these last two rounds appear to be all Ketchell. Lankford is trying to keep Ketchell away, but Ketchell keeps tearing in. Lankford's running. He's ducking. He's trying to tire out Ketchell, but Ketchell has tremendous endurance. The crowd is now beginning to boo Langford. At the end of the round, Langford threw a vicious right. It was so powerful that he careened forward, landed on his knees and elbows. But there was a reporter there who thought Langford faked it. Who's Langford trying to kid, he wrote. He couldn't miss that badly if he was drunk and had one leg cut off. Round six, the final one. The fighters shake hands. Ketchell again swarms Langford. Langford again runs. The fans are really upset about this. Then, as before, Langford stopped running. He landed several blows, but Ketchell shook them off. Near the end, Langford is showing obvious fatigue. He clinches, but Ketchell tears loose, continues the attack. With the final bell, the crowd gave Ketchell a standing ovation. Ketchell walks over to Langford's corner, and he shakes hands. Langford, it is reported, whispered in Ketchell's ear, Hey, I'll see you in San Francisco, Stanley. Another report says, I'll see you in San Francisco, Mr. Ketchell, whatever. The verdict, 
Well, some experts thought that Langford held back to spare Ketchell from a knockout. Others gave the victory to Ketchell. Most people appeared to call it a draw. There were times in the fight when the action was very slow. The fighters were obviously stalling. But once Ketchell was stung by Langford's very heavy wallops, then he appeared to take it seriously, in particular in the last two rounds. Ketchell's strong performance in those last two rounds made him the winner in front of the crowd. But, according to sources such as Box Rec, which you can see online, the winner appeared to be Langford. Sam Langford is reported as having said that he did his best and that Ketchell's brutal style during the last two rounds was too much for him. Later on, and I'm not sure how much later, Langford is reported as having said, quote, Ketchell's fighting technique is sheer tumultuous ferocity, a rage that is barely controlled. I never saw any man coming at me like that before. I hope to never see it again. One reporter who was there ringside said, when that fifth round began, Stan became an animal. His eyes were so wild and large, that he didn't look mean, but beyond that. It was the quickness of the change that startled me, because you never saw it coming. After the fight, Ketchell shared a bottle of champagne with Langford and gave him a bunch of money, so many bills that, according to one report, Langford could not fit all the money in his pocket. There you have it. Ketchell swarming for six rounds, violently so for the last two rounds, and Langford seemingly holding back, but landing far more accurate and damaging blows. The result of all this being a competitive future rematch, this time for Ketchell's middleweight title, and one promising a huge gate, and by the way, a fight that would never occur because Ketchell was murdered, just months after his encounter with Langford. Columnist Ring Lardner put it this way, and I'm quoting, Ketchell was shot in the back by the common-law husband of the lady who was cooking his breakfast. And that's it. This is E.T. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that bell icon to be notified of future videos. Put in your comments below.